you know, the world of dating is that thing where there's, there's always things to learn because at the end of the day, it's just connecting with other human beings, right? Learning how to connect meaningfully with other human beings, but with like a fun, sexy twist, right? Yep. Okay, good. All right. So excellent. So Jeff, for you, it's really about just, it sounds like spending more time meeting people in real life than say online. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I haven't done online dating for a while, but mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm not, as you know, I'm not against it. I think it's a good way to meet people and anything I could learn about how to do that. I'll probably have to do that again in the near future. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it doesn't hurt to have as many irons in the fire as possible, yeah. but in real life, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing like it. Now that the pandemic's over, you know, yeah. <laughs> no excuses. All right. Awesome. And Brian, so what brought you here? What are you hoping to get out of tonight? Uh, you know, I came out of curiosity and I'm trying to see, I've been mostly like a shy guy pretty much when it comes to this sort of thing. Mm. Uh, I rock enough. I do. I am on some dating apps, but I felt like it's not really getting me anywhere mm. like, of all the years. I think I've been on them for about, gosh, like five years or something. Mm. And I think I only got like three, two or three dates out of it. And got even it. still, it's just not going anywhere. Got it. And um, now I, I'm just kind of sick of the dating apps. I kind of mm. want to like get over there, but I just need to overcome like maybe some shyness or, or maybe some shyness, trying to be more, trying to make the approach and try and see where this can take me. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. So great. So if I hear you correctly, like your issue is putting yourself out there, right? Online, in real life. I mean, it's not that you're not putting yourself out there, but you're not getting the results that you're hoping for with all the energy and effort that you've been putting into it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Very good. All right. So you guys are in for a treat. I'm going to give you three of my favorite strategies tonight. And this is all stuff that I take, you know, my six month clients through. So I'm trying to give you my top level, like best juiciest strategies that you can just take away right now. Um, and if you have questions about any of it, obviously ask me. So yeah, so tonight is called, you know, how to date without playing games. So there's a lot of dating experts out there and there's a lot of advice and there's a lot of entertaining people who give dating advice while playing characters. And that can be certainly very helpful, but there's something that is very inauthentic about it. And I think that it's really important to understand the what goes on behind the scenes when it goes into dating, right? So that's why I'm calling this authentic strategies for winning people over. And the truth is, is that everything that we're doing here, you can apply it elsewhere in your life because how we do one thing is how we do everything. So if you're if you're shy or if perhaps you're concerned that your disability makes you unattractive for some reason, or you're out there and you're in public, but you're not quite sure how to approach people, this is the type of work that is gonna help you in all areas of life, but especially in your love life. Why? Because our love lives are a little bit high pressure, right? <laughs> like there's that extra level of like performance required that we don't encounter elsewhere in their in our lives, right? So, you know, by the end of this masterclass, you're going to learn these three things, right? How to go from shy and passive to confident and unstoppable, right? That's for you, Brian. How to approach and connect with anyone in any situation. That's for you, Jeffrey. And then for all of you, right? Like how to make your own best matches, because part of the reason why we suffer in dating is we just, we don't make great matches for ourselves, either because we're not putting ourselves out there in a way that's attractive to other people, not because we're not attractive, just because the method is unattractive, or because, you know, we just actually don't know what it is that we're looking for. We're throwing spaghetti at the wall, hoping it sticks. And then we get really disappointed with the whole dating process because I've tried so many things and nothing is working, right? Okay. So first and foremost, I want you guys to make sure you're taking notes, whether it's digital or on paper or pen, whatever old fashioned, new fashioned way you'd like to do it. Um, so first and foremost, I think it's important to introduce myself, right? Like, why should you even listen to what I have to say? Like, yeah, I'm a talking head who might have some decent advice, but you know, a lot of this is backed by my years of experience and who I am in the world. So uh, I know that most of you are new to me. Jeff has probably already heard this before, but Mick and Brian seeing as like, you're kind of brand new, you know? This is a little bit more about who I am. So first and foremost, I'm a social scientist. So I'm not just somebody who like went through enough dates and figured out like I have the formula <laughs> on how to do it right. But rather I'm trained in cultural anthropology. I'm interested in psychology, communications, neuro-linguistic programming, right? So all of these things that it sounds like a lot of words, but I promise you when you start embracing, looking at the world and looking at connecting with other people this way, it makes a radical difference 
in how you approach the world and how people approach you. And how I know this for a fact is because I spent 15 years as a celebrity and society photographer in New York City, right? So the toughest market in the world where if you are not good at what you do, you get eaten alive and spitting out like a kitten. So, you know, I went from a girl who grew up in Lake Tahoe, who was super shy, you know, we'll get to that, to being able to perform in New York City with the best of the best. And being able to bring those skills and talents to you guys is like one of my passions, okay? So I've been doing dating and love life coaching for over four years, so I didn't just like start yesterday. I worked as a VIP matchmaker for some of the top agencies in terms of, you know, how to help people make matches. And I've found that I prefer to teach you how to do it than do it for you. And then, yes, I've invested thousands of hours in my in my research, in my education, in my training. And then, like I said, I used to be painfully shy. OK, if you guys had met me <laughs> 20 years ago before I even started the journey, personal development journey, moving to New York City, finding who I was, I was that kid that hid in the corner. Right. I part of the reason why I became a photographer was not just to be able to tell people's stories, but was because I could hide behind something. I didn't really have to talk to people like the camera did the work for me. But as I said, you know, moving to New York City, uh, I obviously had to totally shift that way of being if I was going to be successful, if I was going to make it and then eventually be able to bring this stuff to you. So any questions about anything that I shared so far? No, all good. OK, great. Oh, yep. Mick has one. Um, not a <clears throat> question, but more just a comment. Um, I definitely uh, relate to being the um, the man in the corner because I, I was almost always that yeah. and yeah. still kind of am. Yeah. So I think one of the other things that I want to try to get out of this tonight, I guess, is ways to get out of my shell, if that makes sense. Good. Then you are in the right room, my friend. <laughs> you are Thank in you. the right room. Absolutely. All right. So I'm going to ask you guys, like, what is dating? Like, what is dating? What do you think dating actually is? Who's brave? Jeff? Um, just, just meeting people and uh, getting to know them and, you know, spending some time with them and, you know, potentially it, it, you know, if you both are into it, then maybe it becoming a relationship of some sort. Okay, got it. So going out, spending time with someone, getting to know them, and if it's a good fit, turning it into a relationship. Yeah? Awesome. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> so, yes, Jeff got it, but I want to dive a little bit deeper into what dating really is, right? Because, yes, of course, it's about meeting someone. Of course, it's about falling in love. Of course, it's about getting into a relationship. But that's a very like narrow way of approaching dating. So what I'm inviting you to start taking on is a much broader view of what dating is, because when we have a broader view, it actually helps us be more discerning, if that makes sense. Now, it seems like, oh, like if we're really narrow, then we hit our target market. But the truth is, is that the broader, bigger picture that we have in our heads, the easier it gets. OK, so dating at its core is engaging and conveying your value to your target market. So this is even before you meet somebody. Okay. So we want to think about dating from like literally the start to finish. So it's like selling a house, right? Like getting into a long-term relationship and or marriage is like walking in the front door of your brand new house. <laughs> okay. But there's a lot of steps that you take before you even walk in the door. Right. So dating is absolutely first and foremost about your curb appeal. Okay. So engaging with and conveying your value to the target market. So like Brian's issue, right? Where he's on the dating apps. He's been on there for five years. He's clearly got pictures. He's got things on there two to three dates in five years. Yeah. Not, not great. Not the greatest percentages I've heard. Okay. So clearly there's a breakdown somewhere in either a identifying your target market or be conveying your value to the target market, right? Like we don't know, but these are the things that we think about with dating, right? So it's creating an opportunity between two people who want to get to know each other on a deeper level. And yes, it's about the opportunity part. So it's really about keeping your mind open as you're meeting people, because one of the things, and we'll get into it in a later slide, but a lot of us are guilty of, is that we judge people so very quickly, right? Versus seeing whoever we meet as an opportunity. Because I can tell you, when you start going out and being social and meeting people, it's not about meeting that person. It's about meeting the people who might know that person. Okay. 
So we'll talk a little bit more about that, but it's about having a bigger, broader view of creating opportunities. Okay. And it's definitely not just about catching feelings. Like obviously we all want feelings and snuggles and sex and like all those fun things that make dating and having a partner fun, but it's also about being the best version of yourself and inspiring the other person to show up as the best version of themselves in such a way that you become as if you, you, it's not that you can't live without each other, but when you're in the presence of someone who's always pushing you to be your best version and vice versa, that's the kind of partnership that we're looking for. Okay. So it's an, you, it, it's, it's for you to show up as your best. Now, mind you, best is never like a finite thing. Being the best version of yourself is like having your fingernails grow. Okay. So it's like, now my fingernails are cut and manicured, but they're going to grow out. They're going to get gnarly. They need to be filed. So it's always about working on yourself. Okay. And that's how dating is as well Is when you've really made a great partnership, a great match. It's somebody who inspires you, not just, I have feelings. We have feelings. Okay. And of course it's not about tricks or gimmicks. It's not about pickup art. It's not about like reading the game and, you know, figuring out how to get a girl into bed as soon as possible. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But that is not dating. That is pickup art. Okay. So what dating is not, and I just want to cover this really briefly, it's not just having an online dating profile. Okay. It's not just swiping on a ton of profiles and hoping somebody matches you. It's not going out for coffee. So if anybody here or anybody who's watching the recording is guilty of coffee dates, please stop for the love of God. Why? Because coffee dates turn into interviews, which is the least sexy way that you can possibly inspire feelings between two people. Okay. It's definitely not staying at home and saying you want a relationship, but taking no action. Right. So there's a lot of us who sit there and say, oh, I really want to meet somebody. And yet I'm only going to the grocery store. I'm only hanging out with the same friends over and over again. I'm only doing the same old, same old and shocked that I'm not getting different results. Okay. And then awkward flirting with strangers and bad pickup lines, you know, definitely not dating. Meeting someone and hoping it turns into a relationship right away. I really want to put this in there because it's it's a place that it's very easy to get stuck. And this phrase is one of my favorites, but we all eat shit when we're hungry, okay? So sometimes when we're hungry for a relationship, we just want to glom on, Jeff's laughing over there. We glom on, right, to somebody because it just feels good. The attention feels good. The, you know, the closeness feels good. That's not dating. That's like, that's something totally different. So dating is that creating those opportunities, being the best version of yourself, looking forward to the future, that sort of thing. Okay. And then casual hookups or friends with benefits are exactly what they sound like. That's not dating. <laughs> it's casual hookups, friends with benefits. All right. Very good. So why knowing the difference matters? Well, first and foremost, because if you go, like I said, if you're going out on coffee dates, if you just have online profiles, if you're just at home wishing that you had a relationship and you're not taking the action to actually get it for yourself, like, are you actually dating or are you living in a world of like, I wish someday maybe could be, would be nice. Okay. So really in order to be out there dating, first and foremost, yes, engaging persona really helps. How do we get that? We're going to get at that in, into that with the strategies, right? Are you consistently working on yourself? Now, this is something that's, you know, kind of a challenge. And a lot of people get stuck in the world of, well, when I meet somebody, then I will have more confidence. Then I will be more loved. Then I will be more whatever it is. Truth is that person can't do that for you. They can't. Now they can inspire you to take whatever you're already doing to the next level. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's why we have other people in our lives. But at the end of the day, you are responsible for how you show up in the world. And if you're not showing up at the, at the, and this isn't best, like you have to be a celebrity, but rather just like when you're like, yeah, I know that I have a lot to offer the, the, anybody who gets a chance to talk to me. I know I look good. I smell good. I'm dressed well. All of those, these, all of those things are on point, right? So that if somebody rejects you, it's not you. <laughs> okay. It's not you. So are you working on the skills that it takes to build trust and value in your ideal partners? So I build my coaching on six pillars. First and foremost is confidence. Obviously, if we have no confidence, it's impossible to go out in the world, right? But the true definition of confidence is being able to trust ourselves. So when we hold ourselves back, when we listen to limiting beliefs, it's because we don't trust that we're capable of something. So the truth about confidence, we'll get into it later, is that it comes from doing, not having, okay? Second is character. So character, it's like, do you even know who you are? Who are you? 
What, who are you? Why are you wonderful to date? Why would somebody want to spend their life with you? What is it you bring to the table? What's important to you? All of those things are really essential in dating. And oftentimes we overlook it because character is who we're, it's who we are behind closed doors. Oftentimes we don't even know who you are. Okay. So of course, communication, there is no relationships without communication and hint communication. Isn't just like saying words, it's listening, it's participating, being present, right? Connection. So in our context here, I like to say connection is helping you guys understand because we're all, you know, you guys are fellows here is understand how and why women think the way they do. And I know that that is one of the most frustrating things for you fellas is why do women do the things they do and how can I navigate it? Because even when a woman loves you and likes you, she's still going to, she's still going to test you. Okay. So I'm here to help you understand what that's all about. And then I like to say, if you nail those first four, then charisma is natural. And charisma is that ability to inspire devotion in other people. And you know, oh, it's you're bo either born with it or you aren't. Well, yes, some very lucky people are born with it. But the truth is, and you're going to see some of my before story in the next coming slides, I had to learn how to be a charismatic person. You know, like Mick, I was hiding in the corner. I was shy to talk to people. I wrestled with self-confidence issues, all of it, all of it, okay? So, you know, being able to step out of your shell and get ha be charismatic is absolutely possible. It can be learned. And then the 60 is just, it's courage, right? The definition of courage is action in the face of fear. You know, the oftentimes the most afraid we are is when we are faced with something we really, really, really want, <laughs> okay? Because it's easy to do stuff that doesn't mean anything to you right? That's your comfort zone. Comfort zone is comfortable for a reason, but fear is what shows up when we're actually going after something we want. So when we are able to take action in the face of fear, then it's a miracle. It's magical what shows up for you guys. And especially in your dating life. Okay. And then last but not least, like, and we're going to talk about this at the end is actively nurturing your connections that you've created with people, right? So it's not just on you, to meet that person. It's about building a network and building connections. And then all of a sudden you've got people who are jumping all over themselves to introduce you to people. Okay. So I'm going to do my best to give this to you guys in, in under an hour, <laughs> right? But you can always book a call with me if you need a little bit more one-on-one uh, -on -one attention. Okay. So I'm going to step out to you guys. Like, what is it that you think is currently stopping you from just already like being in a relationship, dating successfully? I think um, for me personally, oh, oh sorry, go, go ahead, ahead, Ryan. No, go ahead. Okay. Oh, so I was just, I was just gonna say for me personally, I guess it's uh, trying to get out of my comfort zone. Like I'm so used to my own routine that I just, um, I just uh, don't. I, I need to change, but I just don't really. I just guess don't feel too comfortable about change or changing my routine from day to day. Got it. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's what's really stopping me, and that's something that I'm trying to change. Got it. So you're you're dating from your from your couch, basically, right? Kind of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got it. Okay, good. So that's the challenge for you, right? Getting out of your comfort zone and actually putting yourself out there in like a real and meaningful way, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Got pretty it. much. <laughs> okay, got it. And Mick. Um, very similar to Brian. Um, and I do have a question, which is. Foolish, but will we uh, get a copy of the slides? Because I actually missed taking notes on some of them. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know what? That's a really good question. I mean, you're going to get access to the recording. Oh, so, we will. Okay. Yeah. So then you'll have access to everything. Um, but are, do you per would you like to have the actual slides? Or like, I um, think the recording should be enough, right? Uh, either or. It doesn't matter. But okay. I just wondered. That's all. No, um, but no that, uh, good. <laughs> to, thank you. Getting back to what's stopping me, um, as I said to you, um, I was born a preemie. I wasn't supposed to live. Mm. Um, due to my prematurity, I was born with uh, <clears throat> with uh, mild cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. Um, I can walk. Mm -hmm. Wasn't supposed to. Mm -hmm. Um. I have a long history of doing things I wasn't supposed to. 
But uh, basically, when it comes to dating, I think I'm really just shy and um i i don't know i i'm honestly not sure what's stopping me except maybe just shyness shyness got it yeah and and it's shyness is that thing where you know we're we're afraid people are judging us we're afraid and you know i'm just going to be blunt and everything i say is always with love and respect but it's that we feel that we're not good enough right that right. we're not worthy that for, we're never going to live up to people's expectations so we already act accordingly right mm -hmm. yeah Got it. Yeah, it's a big one. Thank you for sharing. Sure. Jeff? Um, probably just um like really you know, making an effort to meet women that are really more like meeting women that are more likely to be those that I might have a relationship with. Mm. Um sort of picking better and looking in some better places, I guess. <laughs> yeah, got it. So having, a, let's just be blunt about it, a smarter strategy. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, okay. That's easy. <laughs> and if it were easy, right, it'd already be done. Yeah. Yes, I get it. All right, excellent. Okay, so good. So these are some other things that people come up with, right? Like, I don't have time. It feels awkward. I'm bad. I'm convinced no one's quality, right? Like, that's what Jeff just said. One that didn't nobody mention, but that comes up is I don't want to come off as needy, right? Like, if I go and introduce myself, is somebody going to sit there and think I'm just like hitting them up for something? And then honestly, like, yeah, just somebody's going to show up, you know, for Brian, it's the Amazon delivery girl. She's gorgeous. She just, you guys lock eyes over the package as she delivers it, right? I'm just teasing you. But yeah, and honestly, like part of what's stopping us is fuck dating. Because I heard from all of you, like kind of getting to the end of the rope. Like, ah, I'm overwhelmed. I'm bored. I hate this. It's tough. I want to quit. Okay. But honestly, the truth is, is that most of us date, uh, approach dating as like, as if we had a poorly drawn map in bad directions. Right. So it's like, OK, go out and meet a, a, another person and you have conversation and maybe you eat some food. And then after the food, you either like each other or you don't. And if you like each other, then eventually becomes a relationship like that's basically what we learn. And then no wonder for a lot of us, it's really tough because it doesn't address the fact that we're shy. It doesn't address the fact that we have limiting beliefs. It doesn't address the fact that, you know, yeah, we get stuck in our comfort zones. And it's like, what is it going to take for me to push myself out of there? What is it going to really take for me to be inspired to actually go for what I want instead of playing, playing it safe, right? Okay. So, you know, this is a whole list of why I became a coach, but basically it's exactly what we're talking about, right? Like identifying those fears and self-doubts that stop you, you know, giving you advice to go after what you want, honestly, helping you engineer the life of your dreams. Now I know engineer is not a very romantic word, but one of the reasons why I love working with men specifically is because I love the way your brains work right? Like very logical, very strategic, very just like, give it to me bullet point. I want to be in action. I just want the answers. Okay. Or am I wrong? Am I right? Am I wrong? Am I right? I honestly, I think it depends Yeah. Um, on the man as I mean, as much as I would love to be a man of action, I have my disability to consider. So, yeah. you know, I can't go climb mountains or, uh, you know, do crazy things like jump out of a plane, do it successfully, you know, whatever. Yeah. So I mean, I guess I could, but there are other factors to consider. Understood. Absolutely. And so when I talk about action, it's about going after what you want. Sure, That's right. the action that we're talking about. So if you if you want to jump out of planes, you're welcome to. I won't join you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. all all you. But it's really about taking action, right? And helping you engineer something. Because I promise you, like, if you keep doing the same things you've been doing, you're going to keep getting the same results you've been getting. Yeah. And that's also obviously the definition of insanity. <laughs> exactly, right? So it's also keeping you accountable, empowered, you know, to be the most authentic version of yourself. So that, you know, Mick, for you, somebody finds you know, your disability, one of the most charming things about you. You already told us you've overcome the odds. Like how attractive is that? Somebody who, you know, excuse me, you told me I can't do something. I'll show you. Like that's very attractive. Okay. So it's about shifting our mindset in order to see like, oh yeah, like, of course, there's going to be a woman out there who admires your bravery and your courage and your ability to overcome obstacles. And you're cute, right? Like, hey, bonus. 
<laughs> sure. Right. Great. So, and also, this is a safe for, a place for us to feel safe and vulnerable. So I love your questions and your shares. You know, that's very meaningful for me. And I take this very seriously. Like, I am I really love being able to support people to become the best versions of their self, of themselves. And then, of course, insider information. So, you know, I'm a girl. I've dated a lot. I've learned a few things along the way. <laughs> so I like to say I've made all the mistakes so you don't have to. Yeah. And just overall evolution. I think transformation and personal development is so important and powerful, you know, and I don't have it here in my slides, but I do think it's an important distinction to bring out is that there's, there is a big difference between therapy and coaching, right? So therapy is about healing and kind of, you know, getting complete with certain things that have happened, traumas, whatever, which is very important, right? I don't mean whatever casually, but you know, it's about really getting complete with the past. Whereas coaching is about being very clear where you are in the present overcoming any obstacles that are stopping you from going after the future you want. And there's something very, very exciting about that. Does that sound exciting for other people? Like going for what you want in the future? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, great. So I have some client success stories scattered throughout here. So I think the most important thing about this client success story is that he was a 44 year old surgeon who came to me, never married, no kids. You know, he'd had a couple girlfriends that were pretty, you know, toxic and we all you know raise your hand if you've ever been in a toxic relationship or know what they are like yeah jeff's nodding his head so it came to me just only ever having ever having had toxic relationships and thinking that at 44 he was kind of doomed right because like damaged goods what's wrong with you you're 44 and you're still single he uh was also short right five five which in the world of dating is that's an uphill battle to climb because most women want a dude who's six foot and over. Okay. So he came to me going like, I don't know, can you help me with this? So, you know, I've kind of highlighted the things that are the most important here is that he learned to focus on what he really wanted, how to recognize those red flags, right? So he doesn't end up in more toxic relationships, how to have more confidence in himself and how to focus, how to focus. And that's the most important thing here, right? Because dating, it's really easy to get unfocused when it's not going our way. <laughs> And I wish I could say that, like, when you work with a coach, myself, anybody, that it's like easy peasy from there. No, there's a lot of hard work. Getting out of your comfort zone is super uncomfortable, super, super uncomfortable. That's why it's not any longer in your comfort zone. But that's where growth happens. That's where you really get what you want. OK, so he got rid of the nice guy. Right. So that was one of the things that he was really wrestling with was being a people pleaser, was, you know, dealing with girls who were very demanding and not very uh, uh mutually beneficial in the sense that they gave back to him. Okay. So it was also my job to call him out. So whenever he was doing that nice guy thing, it was like, uh-uh, stop. Cause we all have blind spots, right? So you guys, if I put my hands on either side of my head, you can see them, right? Yeah, I can't. And that's why we have other people in our life is because they can very easily see the things that we can. And of course, working with somebody who's experienced at this can help you navigate through it. Okay. So his, this, we went, we worked together, helped him work on his being nervous, overthinking, focusing on minute de details, but, and by focusing on his core beliefs and what he wanted in life, and also being, a, I, being able to identify them in another person, he literally just got engaged uh, at the solar eclipse in Austin. To a girl, by the way, to a woman who is five nine. <laughs> okay. So I share this story because he came to me thinking that it, he was hopeless. This was his last stand. If it didn't work, then he was just going to be a perma bachelor for the rest of his life. And now he's engaged and they're on the way to having a family, like really big stuff here. Okay. So what you guys came for strategy number one is how to go from shy and passive to confident and unstoppable. So I'd love for you guys to share which of these in this list sounds the most familiar to you. You can put them in the chat. You can shout them out. I would say for me, it's definitely one, two, four, and six. One, two, four, and six. Oh, okay, got it. Because there are, I mean, there are certain things that I'm very confident yeah. in. Like, for example, um, I'm very confident in what I do for work, which is uh, computer research. So oh, I know nice. how to, you know, work a search engine very well. Mm -hmm. And I'm confident in that. Mm -hmm. I'm getting, you know, more confident in cooking. 
and that skill. Nice. But um, yeah, uh, uh, lacking self esteem is definitely big for me. Yeah, it's a big one. Got it. All right, Jeff. What about you? Um, I don't know. Probably number four. I probably do that. Uh, just sort of like now I'll get. I'll I'll put some time into this at some point, and then yeah. just sort of, in the meantime, you know, if I meet somebody, I do and whatever. <laughs> got it. Yeah, got it. And how about you, Brian? I probably have to say two, three, and um, uh, possibly five. Five. Mm hmm. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, I got it. All right. So I can already tell you just meeting more people is not going to solve your problem. A lot of people just think like, oh, if I'm more proactive on the apps or if all, all I do is approach strangers, then somebody is going to say yes to me at some point. It's not how it works. Okay. So before we go into my favorite strategies, and you're actually going to get three of them, um, is I want to share a little bit about my own personal journey. Okay. And, you know, I already kind of hinted at that I was that shy passive person who hid in the corner of the room. And especially if an attractive person was going to come and talk to me, I would have been mortified. There was no way that I would ever approach anybody. Okay. So I want to show my before picture. Okay. So this is when I very first moved to New York City. And this was like the best dress that I owned. It was a, a sweater I had borrowed from a friend. You know, I'm hiding behind this lamp. My clothes are wrinkled. And I'm at like a super chic and sexy party. So my point is, is that look at me. I'm literally hiding, <laughs> not being the best version of myself, super shy in front of the camera going like, what am I supposed to be doing right now? Okay. So after, here we go. Okay. So my transformation went from that shy girl who was mortified to have somebody even taking her picture to being in the society pages to being dressed by designers. And I'm not saying like, this is the path that you have to follow, but rather that it's possible to transform. Okay. It is possible to go from that, you know, hairy little caterpillar <laughs> that we all are and go through the process in, in order to become the butterfly that you are. Right. So I'm not saying that you have to show up on the society pages, but with my invitation to you is that it is absolutely possible to step out from the shadows, to stop being shy, to not putting yourself out there, to being, you know, to procrastinating and being lazy. Because part of the reason why we procrastinate is because we have this fear of being perfect. Okay. And if we're not perfect, then we don't put ourselves out there. And then all of a sudden, time goes by. And then we miss out on those opportunities that if we were able to embrace not being perfect, that, okay, I actually have more opportunities now, okay? But it is about always being, putting yourself out there. So being the best version of yourself is very different than perfect. You guys understand the difference? Got it. Okay, good. All right. So does this mean you have to totally change who you are in order to approach the people you want? It doesn't, but it does matter your mindset. It does matter how you put yourself out there. It does matter that confidence piece, which we're going to dive into, right? Because confidence, like I said, is trusting yourself, okay? So it's absolutely. And it's not just about changing your mindset about yourself, but about other people too, right? Like for you, Mick, assuming that like people just aren't going to want to talk to you because you're different. Or Brian, you know, it's safer to stay at home and not even leave your house because you've tried putting yourself out there online and it's just not working for you. And then Jeff, like you go out there, but uh, you know, it's going to happen when it's going to happen versus being intentional, right? Like you're a great guy. You deserve a wonderful woman. She's out there. <laughs> She's out there. Okay, great. So yes, like I said, the truth is, is that confidence comes from doing, not having. Okay, so now you guys, strategies, number one, how to go from shy and passive to confident and unstoppable. Number one, right, take notes, okay? You can do screenshots too if you want. So is to do a greatest hits list, okay? So these are the top 50, five zero, I'm really pushing you here, five zero things that you're proud of, okay? So these can be personal, these can be professional, 
something that it took something for you to achieve. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be like Guinness Book of World Records, the most amazing thing. But like for me, one of my personal achievements, and I know this sounds silly, is but I set up my coffee machine every night before I go to bed. You know why? Because when I wake up in the morning, I just turn it on. And that just makes me feel amazing. It's a stupid thing, but I feel really good about it. <laughs> okay. So your greatest hits list is just like, what are those things that you have created, accomplished, engineered, whatever in your life that make you smile, that make you proud, that you show off to other people. Okay. So write those 50 things down. And then this is really important here is put it somewhere where you can look at it often and remind yourself of who you are because we all go through those cycles of feeling really good about ourselves and then not so great about ourselves and it's those times when we're in the dumps where we're full of self-doubt when we're beating ourselves up when we're wrestling with the negative voices in our heads is when this greatest hits list is your best friend because then you get to look at it and go I remember who I am I know who I am I don't need to be in the dumps like there's nothing wrong with having a bad day, okay? But there's a difference between staying stuck there <laughs> and then, you know, five years go by or it's like, yeah, having a tough day, but wait a minute, remember that I did that thing. Remember that I do this thing. Remember that I, you know, saved this person, made a difference, had a huge impact, volunteered, whatever it is, okay? So that alone, because remember, confidence comes from doing, not having. So your greatest hits is stuff you have done. You've done it. You know yourself as a person who accomplishes things, okay? So assignment two is to improve your overall look. So maybe it's changing your haircut. Maybe it's having better posture. Maybe it's learning a new skill. So if you've had a passion that you've always wanted to follow, that knowing that you're good at it is going to make you feel more confident about yourself, take a challenging class. So for some people, it's you know, learning how to speak a language or take dancing or whatever, right? And of course, like the happy byproduct of doing those things is you meet new people, okay? But it's not about the meeting new people. It's about improving yourself, okay? And inevitably, once you change up your look, when you wear better clothes, when you smell better, you have no wrinkles, whatever, you're instantly more magnetic because when you look like you take care of yourself, okay, then it's, shows that you're able to take care of someone else. Very subtle, but very powerful messaging, okay? Whatever it is, it's about making you feel good about yourself. Because again, validation is not external. I mean, it's nice. External validation feels really good, but it's kind of like the cherry on top. It's about us doing the things that we love that make us empowered and feel good that matter the most, okay? So bonus, Pick up a martial arts, go to the gym, do something physical that's different, change your diet. There's just something about getting into your body that helps you get into action around other things, right? It's hard to feel bad for yourself when you're busy doing stuff. It's hard to feel bad about your body when you've taken up a new class and even though you're still the new guy, like you're punching bags or whatever it is that you choose to do, okay? So any questions about any of that before we move on? No, no, no. Okay, good. All right. You guys got all that down. You wrote it down. There it is. I want together. you to know that I put, I get my coffee maker all set up the night before also. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Booyah. <laughs> Booyah. Yeah. Awesome. I call it my now me taking care of future me. That's what I, I tell myself that I do not just the coffee maker thing, but some other stuff sometimes like getting, um, like, you know, if I'm doing something and getting my lunch or something ready, because I know I have to get up early, you know, I tell myself, like, future Jeff is going to be happy that you did this tonight. So that's right. Look at that. Loving on you, taking care of you. <laughs> it's important. Well, awesome. I go to the gym at least two or three times a week. So I think I'm good there. <laughs> but doesn't it feel good, right? Like when you get out and you get in your body and... Yeah, that's confidence. Yeah, yeah. That's what gives you confidence. Awesome. Excellent. All right. And then Mick, what's like what's one thing you put on your greatest hits list? Um, well, <clears throat> I didn't get a huge chance to write all 50 down, but I can just one. Just pick one. Speak to one that I don't know if it's an accomplishment, but um I helped um 
a dear friend of mine win a uh, international <clears throat> uh, award for her nonprofit. Wow, look at you. Congratulations. That's awesome. That is absolutely, absolutely goes on your greatest hits list. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That's probably number one, maybe number two. Good. Well, and you got 48 to go. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. All right. So client success story. So this is just a little bit about a, a, a client that I was able to help him with his wardrobe, right? So as they say, the clothes makes the man. And, you know, one of the things he was really wrestling with in his dating life was like, what do I wear? How do I put things together? And it was, it was so valuable for me to see, because we did a photo shoot and everything together was to see him in person because it was, it was like, oh, I see now what is going on for you. So, you know, he, I have his permission to share this story, but he shows up to the photo shoot with a polo shirt and it kind of looks like he'd used his shirt as a napkin, you know, and he's, he's ready for a photo shoot. And I said, okay, so if this is how you're showing up on dates and yeah, that's obviously an area that we have to look at because if you show up looking disheveled, their immediate impression of you is this guy is disheveled. Okay. So we went through his wardrobe and this isn't about buying new things. It isn't about like, you know, breaking the bank and going shopping, but rather just learning how to put your outfits together, learning how to dress well for yourself, looking sharp, because just like going to the gym, just like taking care of your future self, just like helping friends, knowing that you walk out the door, looking your best, like don't leave the house until you're happy with what you see in the mirror. That alone is going to make a huge difference for you. Okay. So on to the next thing, next strategy, is how to approach and connect with anyone in any situation. So <laughs> if it's because you're out networking, you're at a volunteer event, you are at the grocery store, you are at the gym, you are at a friend's party, you are out in a situation full of strangers, I'm going to give you some of my favorite tips on how to approach anyone in any situation, okay? So first and foremost, before we dive into that, what are the following beliefs that are holding you back from being able to approach people already? So shout it out when you see on this list what feels, what resonates. Um, I'd say all sex for me. <laughs> all sex? Yeah. yeah. Got it. And, and I think particularly for me, six is probably the biggest mm -hmm. because again, due to my cerebral palsy, not everyone notices because it's the type of CP that, um, is called, uh, walking CP. Mm-hmm. So I can actually walk on my own, you mm -hmm. know, whatever my body considers walking. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty, um, what's the word? <clears throat> pretty subtle because unless somebody's looking at my feet, they wouldn't really notice. Sure. Got it. But you're still obviously like paying attention to them, right? So you're kind yeah. of doing a little prejudge, like you're judging them before they get a chance to judge you. Yeah. <laughs> which it. which I've unfortunately probably done. Um since I could walk and talk. And um it's like, you know, I put armor on every single time I walk out out the door. That's it, right? Absolutely. It's, it's, isn't it hard to connect with people when you're protecting yourself and it, stay away from me? <laughs> it can be. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Got it. Okay. But I do warm up to people. I yeah. will admit of, that. Of course. Right. Like After we're not going to fall into anyone's arms immediately, but yes, it is difficult to connect with people when you have that armor put up. Yeah, of course. Got it. And Brian, how about you? Uh, probably just saying the wrong thing. Like um, if I had to pick, any one of them, would, I would say that from number three. Got it. Okay, good. So you, it's just like you're fumbling over your words and how do I charm this person into a conversation? Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay, got it. And how about you, Jeff? Um, I don't know. Of these on this list here, I guess probably maybe like number four. I don't want to feel like or come off as like, you know, needy or 
um you know like i don't know and then i don't know maybe a little bit number five i guess mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah right because you, know, you have no guarantee when you yeah play. yeah there's been relationships where i just have been devastated and um i've been divorced 15 years but i've had numerous relationships in that time and so yeah I, sometimes i'm kind of like now this it's better to sort of be st- stay middle ground than really fall for somebody so got it so what i hear is that it, like literally holding you back from not just approaching people but even just connecting or going deeper with people. yeah i mean i i'll meet people and right. start dating but i'm kind of all like i don't know i don't know if i really give it or uh, or, or them a, a chance really sometimes like got it got it yeah so got it so you're afraid of getting hurt and then also like because of that you know or because you feel like you're begging for someone's time and attention they're left feeling one way you're left feeling one way and then here we are right (laughs) yeah got it got it okay good so let's just cover what these beliefs cost us right and you can chime in and if there's one that really jumps out at you but yeah like Jeff says like you go out and do things hard time connecting with other people I mean yes you can say hello and be friendly but connecting something different or maybe you miss that people might actually be flirting with you because you're prejudging them, <laughs> right? So I've already written this person off. And so they're being like friendly and I'm sitting there thinking like, what's wrong with them, right? Or maybe you are out and you see somebody who's really attractive and totally your type. And it's like, nah, I'm afraid of getting hurt. So I'm just going to let them walk by and then kick myself later for not actually introducing myself. And then I know for Mickey mentioned like getting friend zoned a lot. So being able to connect with other people is not a problem, but it's the going beyond the, platonic polite agreeable barrier yeah and then people pleasing I mean you know we want to be loved so maybe if I'm just like nice enough to this person they'll give me some time and attention <laughs> yep. right and then I never meet anyone I'm all that attracted to like that's like you know it's it's their fault it's everybody else's fault I'm great I don't meet anyone that I'm finding attractive and it do you or is it because you're not your eyes are not open right that's what we're working on here yeah. So yeah, yeah, beautiful. So we already said it, right? What is it called when you keep doing more of the same thing? Expecting different results. Insanity. Yeah. Okay. So to share a little bit about my personal journey. So I told you I was a celebrity photographer, right? So in order for me to be able to do my job, not only that, be able to approach these people, make friends with them, build relationships, build connections with them. I really had to learn how to get out of my shy shell. I had to learn how to be able to approach anyone in any situation. I had to be able to make demands of these people, right? So when you're in a crowd full of people and everyone is trying to get a celebrity's attention, how do you stand out and get their attention, right? So these are the things that I teach you guys. These are the things that I teach my clients is how do you stand out in a crowd in order to get somebody else's attention? So, you know, I'm doing a little bit of a humble bragging here because I I like to share that, you know, I was a celebrity photographer, but this wasn't by casual chance, right? So if you remember that shy girl in the wrinkly dress who was hiding behind everybody, she was not capable of doing this, right? So I really had to learn how to do this and take on working with a mentor, take on changing and completely shifting my mindset, updating my wardrobe, you know, really putting in the time and energy and effort in order to get the career that I wanted and, you know, look pretty good while I was doing it too. Okay. So you guys recognize who some of these people are. Yeah. This one I'm particularly proud of. This is Buzz Aldrin. One of the first he's man on the moon. <laughs> yeah. Good. All right. And then some more humble bragging. You guys know who these people are, right? Yeah. And I'm not going to say who, but you know, I've dated a few celebrities. So if I can go from that shy girl from Lake Tahoe who can't talk to nobody to having, you know, fun stories about celebrities, I can teach you how to do. (laughs) I can teach you how to do. And I promise it wasn't Dr. Ruth and it wasn't Liza Minnelli. (laughs) Okay. Awesome. So, of course, it doesn't mean that you have to be a celebrity, right, in order to be able to approach more people or to be more successful. I just share that because you know, to go from somebody who was hiding in the corner of the room to being able to do that for 12 years of my life, five nights a week, just being able to approach some of the most wealthy, powerful, interesting people in the world, and also be able to learn from them, right? So I'm not saying you have to be a celebrity, but 
it absolutely, there is something to someone who walks in the room and you don't know who they are, but you already know they're a star. It's how they carry themselves. It's how they think about themselves. It's how they think about other people. And that is the mission behind what I'm doing here with you guys is to teach you that level of stuff. Okay. It's not just about having the right script. It's not just about wearing a clean shirt, right? It's really about understanding dynamics, right? Interpersonal dynamics. Okay. So your turn to learn, your turn to learn. So write it down, take some screenshots. Assignment number one, I already mentioned it before. I'm going to mention it again. It's about shifting your mindset. Okay. And this is as simple as assume everyone you're talking to is interested in talking to you until proven different. And bonus, don't make it mean anything if they no longer want to talk to you. Okay. Because ice cream, absolutely most wonderful, tasty, yummy thing. But guess what? There are people in this world who don't like ice cream. <laughs> so not everybody's going to like you and that's totally fine. But walk into the conversation assuming they want to talk to you. And there's something about that. It's not about being pushy. It's not about being like you, me, talk to me now. But, you know, you're starting up a conversation with an attractive person at the gym or at the grocery store, at your mom's cousin's birthday party or wherever it is. You start up that conversation and just say, yeah, like this person wants to talk to me. Because when we shift that mindset, because you've talked to people who are like, oh, you know, if I was like this with you guys and I don't really have like a lot to tell you and I don't, I'm not really sure why you guys are here. Like, it's really nice that you showed up, like went from like interesting to super repellent real fast, right? <laughs> So I know you guys want to be here. I know you want to be here. And I'm acting accordingly. So you too. Okay. So that's assignment one. Assignment two, eye contact. This is such a powerful, 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 powerful strategy. Eye contact is absolutely, and you have to use it with care, is the easiest way to start approaching people. How do I know when I'm in a room full of 500 people and there's somebody that across the room that I need to go and photograph them? I don't just go over there and tap them on the shoulder and be like, hey, turn around, I need your picture, right? I see them from across the room. I make the eye contact with them. If they smile, if they light up, if they see me in my camera and they're excited about it, then I know that I have the green light to go over there and introduce myself and ask for their photo right? Versus if I'm trying to make eye contact with somebody and they will not give me the time of day, then guess what? You don't go over there and tap them on the shoulder and try and hit on them, <laughs> right? The easiest way to like, you know, go out of your comfort zone, then go right back into it is to approach people who are not giving you a green light. Okay. So eye contact is your green light. Now, my personal strategy is that first and foremost, do they smile and look away? Because every female is going to do that. It's just our natural instinct. We, we are taught not to keep maintaining eye contact with a man. But if you make eye contact with a female and she smiles, that's promising. Not a guarantee. It's promising. Okay. So, you know, give yourself 30 to 45 seconds. Look at your watch, your phone, look around the room, depends on where you are. And then see if you catch her checking you out again. Because if she's curious about you, she will absolutely try and sneak another look. So kind of trying to catch her, sneaking a look at you. And if she catches you catching her and she smiles and looks away, still a good sign because it's that smile, like any flirty thing. She plays with her hair. She shrugs her shoulders, whatever. And if you make eye contact a third time, right, and it's a little bit more meaningful, then you have absolutely every green light to go over and introduce yourself. Now, this isn't asking her on a date. It's not asking for her phone number. It's literally being charming and going over and saying, hey, I couldn't help you from a help, but notice you from across the room, right? I just wanted to come over and introduce myself and say, hi, you have a beautiful smile. You have great eyes. You know, how's your night? It doesn't have to be complicated, but that eye contact thing is going to be your green light. Very, very important. Okay. Any questions about that before I move on? No. Okay. So bonus, start talking to strangers. And this isn't attractive strangers. This isn't strangers you think you want to have a relationship. This is any strangers at all, and especially ones that you have nothing to lose with. So this is talking to your grocery checkout person. This is talking to the person who checks you in at the gym. This is starting up a conversation with, uh, I don't know, somebody you're standing next to while you're both looking at something, right? There's a million different opportunities to talk to strangers. And the reason why I say this is for you to be able to overcome that fear of talking to strangers first and foremost. But when it's somebody that you have nothing to lose with, fine, you fumble, you say something stupid, they don't want to talk to you again, great, no problem. 
It's just like anything, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Because I promise you, when you see that very attractive person from across the room that you really want to go talk to, and you haven't practiced talking to anybody, you sit there tongue-tied, self-doubt, fear, I'm going to say something stupid and blah. So when you have the, the practice of just going and talking to random people, when that attractive stranger does finally show up or you get introduced through mutual friends, it's not so awkward. Does that make sense? Okay, right, because we're thinking big picture here. It's not just about focusing on the, the finding that person. It's about bigger picture, okay? And then plus, it's going to help you with anything. You know, it's going to help you make friends. It's going to help you build networks. It's going to help you in your job. It's going to help you with your family, right? If you ever go to big family gathers, instead of hiding in the corner, just go talk to that weird, that cousin that you've never talked to before, whatever. And then you find out you both love I don't know, making coffee the night before and then you become best friends. I don't know. <laughs> okay. You don't know. You never know who you're going to meet. And the other thing about talking to strangers is that maybe that's not your person, but it's your person's roommate or their coworker or their cousin or their parent. And then they're like, wow, you're a really great guy. I know a really beautiful woman that you should get to know. Okay. Big picture. All right. So that's all of your assignments. Make sure you take a screenshot. You've got them written down. And you have the opportunity to book a one-on-one -on -one with me if you want a deeper dive on any of this. Got it? Okay, beautiful. So- oh, um, oh, oh, I was gonna say just real quick. So getting back to assignment two. Yes. Uh, so basically sort of like uh, mirroring, uh, mirroring the um, person when it comes to eye contact. Hmm, that's a good question. So it's not exactly mirroring. Um, because mirroring is reflecting what the other person is doing. And that's making the assumption that she's going to be the one who's initiating the eye contact, I think is what you're saying. So I like to say, like, for example, when you're walking into a room, like my favorite trick is that you look around like you're looking for somebody, you know, <laughs> okay. Even if you don't know anybody in the room, you're just looking around to see if you see that person you're looking for, because people who are curious are going to check you out. Right. And so if you're looking around the room and you see a cute girl who's checking you out, Ah, you just make that brief and easy eye contact. So it's not exactly mirroring, but rather like maybe matching might be a better way to say it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, because mirroring is a little bit different and I'm glad you brought that up. We're not going to cover it tonight, but I do cover that, um, you know, deeper in my coaching. But uh, it's really more about just like, it's, it's yeah, paying attention if like you're matching energy. So that smile is really important. So, cause you know, we all, we often make eye contact with strangers and like, it's weird and we just don't look at them again. <laughs> right? So that's why we're looking for the second and third look, because if we don't want, if we don't want to look at somebody, we won't. Us women have been trained to not make eye contact with men we don't want to engage with. So if she keeps making eye contact with you, she is very subtly telling you, please come say hello to me. So that's not mirroring. That's like following, you know, following the cues. Okay. Great. Okay. You got it? Okay, great. So I love yeah. this client success story, right? So I had a client who came to me with an inventory problem. So kind of like you, Brian, right? Where you've been on the apps and you know you, you, you put yourself out there, so to speak, but you're just not really meeting anybody. And it's like, if only I met more people, then that would solve the problem. But you know what I helped this client with was really doing a deep dive on his dating profiles, like basically an audit. So what kind of pictures are you using? What prompts are you using? What is it that you're communicating in your profile? Like one of the, one of my favorite worst profiles I ever saw was a guy's every answer to every single of the prompt was tacos. Like, so on a typical Sunday, I'm doing tacos and, you know, two truths and a lie. I like tacos. I love tacos. I hate tacos. Like, and he's, and you know, I'm sure he's at home being like, I don't understand why <laughs> that taco loving woman isn't just like snatching me up right now. Okay. So, you know, working on your photos, working on your prompts, and then obviously in-person things. So what was really important about this was those are like the very basic kind of foundational things, right? Like very cosmetic things, but it was about changing his feeling about dating and how to interact more comfortably and how to be more confident with women. Right. And so just changing his mindset, changing a couple pictures, changing a couple prompts, you know, it went from the inventory issue on the, the low end, like not enough dates to having too many dates. Okay. So that's what we do when we do this work together. All right. 
So strategy number three, how to make your own best matches, how to, and, you know, raise your hand <laughs> if this is what you really want to learn. Cause yeah. Okay. Fine. Talking to people, meeting girls, but fine. We've all had those toxic relationships. How do I avoid getting into another one where I get hurt again? It's all fine and good. I'm confident. It's all fine and good. I can talk to anybody, but if she's crazy, <laughs> it's a problem, right? Okay, great. So in terms of these, like, what are you guilty of when it comes to making matches for yourself? And you can just shout them out as they come to you. Hmm. Um, I would say two. Mm, five. Uh, seven and eight. Got it. Got it. How about you, Jeff? Um, probably uh, number three, but it's fun and everything, but. They don't last too long, but um, and then probably part of the reason for that is like number four, yeah, yeah, got it, yeah, exactly. So it's fun to have fun, and then all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, three months in, I see your your real person, and whoa, oops, not a good luck to fit. <laughs> got it. Okay, and how about you, Brian? I think the I'm gonna have to say number six. I think the lot one day that I was on, we actually had a about three days first turned to a coffee date then a couple of dinners and I ended up I think I was trying to become more pleasing like a people pleaser so mm -hmm. but yeah definitely number six. Oh yeah got it yeah so you just have that like interview feeling so there's no sparks there's no chemistry you're just asking each other a bunch of like weird get to know you questions and then feels mm -hmm. kind of yeah got it okay got it absolutely so and this is my favorite one is that we all want results now right like that doesn't sound like a bad thing, but when it comes to dating, it is absolutely one of the most detrimental attitudes to have is because that's what stops us from really getting what we want is because we want it now. <laughs> so we wanted to have that date now. We want to have that coffee date and have the sparks now. We want to know now if they're healthy and good and compatible. And as we have learned, you know, as if you all share, it doesn't work that way. Okay. So that's one absolutely limiting belief that has to disappear is that it's a now phenomenon. Dating is not a now phenomenon. So part of this strategy, and this is not my own rule, but this is a rule that I love. It's called the 90-10 rule. And the 90-10 rule is that 90% of the people that you interact with, especially in the dating sphere, are not meant for you. <laughs> They're not meant for you. And I know at first it's like 90%. Holy crap, Amber, that's a lot of people. Like that, those odds look terrible. But the reason why I share this is because when you get 90% of the people that you meet, you date, you flirt with, that you hang out with, have situationships with are not for you, then it's not so detrimental to your sense of self-worth. It's not so detrimental to your efforts and action plan. It's not so detrimental to your willingness to keep putting yourself out there because it's like, oh, they were just part of that 90%. You know, everyone is either a lesson or a blessing and sometimes lessons are blessings, Okay. So those 90% are those lessons that you learn so that when the 10% does come along, you feel more confident, you feel more prepared, you know who you are, you know what you want, you know who you're looking for, and you found somebody who knows the same and you guys are aligned, right? Aligned on all of those things so that, yay, I have finally met somebody who's happy, healthy, loving, loves me, can't get enough of me and vice versa. So yeah, 10%. Small number, but it's a juicy, good, wonderful number. And at the end of the day, we're literally just looking for one, okay? <laughs> for one. So I love this rule because it just helps you realize that, you, yes, you're going to have to put yourself out there. But when you're strategic about it, when you have the right mindset about it, when you're proactive about it, it becomes a lot more fun, a lot more, I'm not going to say effortless, but it's a lot, it feels a lot better than probably currently does, Okay. So your turn to learn. All right. So first and foremost, you guys, instead of putting the pressure on you 
to meet all of the people that you need to know. And again, dating apps and great and going out is great. And we're going to talk more about that, but just ask people that you know, and not necessarily for intros to that person, but like invitations to things. So you have a friend who's a member of a real estate investing group, and there's a lot of women in that group. Well, are you, you know, do they allow plus ones? Great. Invite me to your, you know, real estate investor group, or maybe you have friends who have board game nights and you haven't been, but you know that there's some really fun people that go there. So get an invitation to go to the board game nights. Or, you know, if you have people who have coworkers, ask them about them. Don't be shy to work your network. Now, of course, there's that fear that like, oh, you know, I don't need people to know I'm single and I don't want to sound desperate and I don't. So obviously how you ask, makes a difference. But the truth is when I say loved ones, and I'm very intentional about that is because when people love you, they want to see you happy. They want to see you dating. They know you're a wonderful person. So of course they're going to be like, oh man, yeah, I will keep my ears open. And also, you know, know that your friends don't always have the best taste. They're not going to always bring the right person for you, but it's better to at least have a team of people who are working with you and for you than to try and do this all on your own. Now, the other thing with the people who love you, and again, this is people who love you and care about you, okay, is to ask them for feedback. Just ask them for feedback. And this can be a little bit tough sometimes, right? Because sometimes people will say things we don't want to hear, but it's the things that we don't want to hear is, is what lives in our blind spot. And I have found in all of my years of coaching and working with people is the thing that people wish they could change the most about themselves is actually the greatest thing about them. You know, so like for you, Mick, like having CP seems like something maybe you wish you could change. It makes things difficult, but I promise you, your mindset shifts around it. You've become a man who is courageous and brave, who has defied the odds, who is charming and confident despite, or maybe because of, right? Like Christopher Reeves was completely paralyzed from the neck down and he was still charming. Okay. Right. (laughs) So you know, it's all about your attitude and your mindset. So, yeah. Yeah. And honestly, for me, I guess my mindset goes back and forth. Yeah. Of sometimes it's a burden to not be able to drive mm-hmm. or it's a burden not to be able to, you know, go hiking with friends because going up is too steep and I'll have yeah. to hold somebody's hand going down or mm-hmm. whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. Um, But then... You know, it's good that I have CP, I guess, because I think a little bit more slowly than most people and, you know, really figure stuff out. Right. Exactly. But I've also never really looked at the way you're talking about as a mindset. So that is definitely something I probably should start. (laughs) There is no should. Just do it. Just do it. Okay. So assignment number two, I really want you to think about this too, right? Is think about the consequences of staying stuck in your comfort zone, you know? And the reason why I say this is because oftentimes we we take more action to run away from the things we don't want than we do taking action running towards the things that we do want, okay? So I really want you to think about that. What does it mean to go another five years with only two to three days? What does it mean to stay stuck in the corner and not really talk to anybody? What does it mean to sit there and be in situationship after situationship until, you know, (laughs) you're in the retirement home and you're like, oh, I'm just teasing, but you know what I'm saying. (laughs) Okay. And then the bonus is now it's your time to be able to book a complimentary session with me. So, you know, if there's anything that you heard tonight that you'd love a deeper dive on, right, to get a little bit deeper either into the confidence piece or the the how to approach people piece, the getting out of your comfort zone piece, like this is, a, you know, I'm trying to cram six months of six months of the coaching that I do in like an hour. <laughs> so I'm sure you've heard something that is of value to you, right? So your opportunity is to reach out to me and we can talk about this, okay? Because the thing is, is that making the best matches for yourself, it requires a lot of honesty. It requires taking a look at, you know, who you, who like who you are. Because if you don't know who you are, how are you possibly going to know who's a good match for you, right? So Mick, for somebody, for you, somebody who loves going hiking, no matter how cute she is, probably not the best fit for you, right? If she's somebody who just wants to charge up a mountain, 
but somebody else who sits there and loves on going on leisurely strolls that don't have right. elevations and you know nice views and park benches that you can sit on guess what you can still be active but at a pace sure. that both of you really love right right that makes yeah. sense yeah good excellent yeah and then of course asking your network going out and introducing yourself to strangers it's kind of amazing when you put that energy out there how all of a sudden people are like oh my god you should come to this thing there's going to be some great people there i want you to meet or i just you know was talking to my coworker the other day and she mentioned she's single and she's adorable you know, let me organize a dinner party. I don't know. Who knows? Possibilities are endless. <laughs> okay, great. So I love this, you know, I love this saying is that dating is a combination of chance, taking risks and patience. So if you can really embrace that, then dating all of a sudden kind of becomes an adventure, right? It's an opportunity for you to push yourself, to, to get out of your comfort zone, to try new things, to see every person you meet as an opportunity, not necessarily for a relationship, but for just connecting with another human being. You know, I had a really great relationship that, you know, the guy, I met him through mutual friends. I met through another guy that I dated, <laughs> okay? So you never know who and how people are gonna come into your life. So if you're always keeping an open mind, looking for opportunities, being the best version of yourself and looking for ways to just, uh, you know, really put yourself out there, it's an inevitable that you get the results you want, right? Because if you keep doing the same thing you've been doing, you're going to get what you've been getting, okay? So I would love to do a Q&A, but I want to ask you guys, like, what are you taking away from this so far? Like, what's been valuable? What have you learned? What are you going to implement immediately? I think I'm going to try to um, not be in the corner so much. Okay. And I actually have, um, two live examples coming up. Um, tomorrow I have a, uh, high school, <clears throat> a reunion. And then next week, um, I have uh, an event for somebody who's running for governor in the Montana. Wow. Look at you. So, Got it's it. an opportunity to get out of my shell. <laughs> yes, sir. Practice making your eye contact. And um, one of my favorite tips about approaching people as well, and I didn't put this on the slide, but I'm going to give it to you guys, is to find something you can compliment somebody about, right? And keep it above the shoulders or below the knees. But, you know, if somebody has a great smile, nice haircut, nice eyes, great shoes, uh, if you're talking to a man, great watch, sense of style, Always look for something that you can genuinely and authentically acknowledge and appreciate about the other person. And it is magical how they were, they will be happy to talk to you. Okay, so make eye contact, open with a compliment, keep the conversation going. Okay. So what about you, Brian? Like what are you what are your takeaways so far? Um, I guess uh, the coffee dates. Oh wow, definitely gotta stay away from that from now on. <laughs> or I will make that my primary thing i should say mm -hmm. um yeah and then next um next saturday i'm going on this uh c2e2 which is basically chicago i, I live in chicago so oh, it's nice. basically like this comic con type of thing so uh i you know all my friends are i grew up in michigan and all my friends live in michigan but i go to this thing like i or at least i'm trying to go at least every i've been going like almost every uh, year now so yeah. <laughs> I think okay. I might use some of these. Uh, I'll try out like a couple of these assignments over there and see how this works <laughs> or see how I how I get adjusted to it. Beautiful. Okay, good. Well, so both Mick and Brian, you better be booking these strategy calls with me before your events next week. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Okay. And what about you, Jeff? What are your takeaways? Um, you know, just probably the sort of the tips you gave there for making eye contact um in you know, some public situations, like, I don't know, maybe at the gym, the gym's a tricky place. I already know that, but, <laughs> yeah. um, and then, you know, just talking to strangers, making authentic compliments. Uh, um, I remember I, I lived in Washington, DC for a while for work. And there was a character that it was out in one of the the districts there. I lived in, in the district and there was an area where people would go out for dinner and bars and 
he, he, the guy was probably not really all there, but he was a, a everybody knew him. He's the compliment guy, and he would give mm. he would give everyone a compliment, like not just like hey, it was a legit one, like, and he would remember sometimes, like uh, oh, aren't you the you're the one that had those nice boots on last time, or the women? And he would just and I was like, and boy, I tell like the women, you know, even though they were, you know, the guy was just saying it to be nice they were so happy after if they especially like if they had some new shoes or their hair looked nice or something and he said something about it it was funny you make you make somebody's day just acknowledging something and the thing is is that you know when it's authentic from you it's not flattery it's it's authentic yeah generally that thing that you notice that you appreciate is probably something that they put a lot of energy and effort into yeah and it's like oh my god somebody noticed because it's rare. Compliments are really rare. So it's actually a real gem and a gift that you can give people. Yeah. And it's amazing how they'll open up to you. And then they remember you like, oh, you're the compliment guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're the guy that knows how to make people smile within five seconds of chatting with you. Awesome. Yeah. I actually have a question about compliments. Yeah, sure. Um, if that's okay. Of course. I am someone who gives compliments, but I rarely get compliments. Is that... Mm-hmm. Does that say something about me or is it just that you're not getting compliments or that you want the compliments and you're not getting them? Um, That I would like compliments, but I don't get them. Got it. So, okay. So words of affirmation is definitely a love language. And I think for you in terms of finding a best match is somebody who's naturally complimentary. So it doesn't mean anything that you're not getting them right. Cause people gen- typically suck at compliments. This is why I'm sure. telling you this is such a gem because most people are terrible at it. But there's something about, it's called the law of reciprocity, right? So when you're good at giving compliments, it's almost automatic that somebody finds something to compliment you back about, right? Right. So if you just kind of become that compliment guy, then people are going to be like, oh, I want to tell make something nice about him too, because he just said something that made me smile. Like, I will find things to compliment. So no, it doesn't mean anything. It just, you know, you like to hear nice things. Like, (laughs) Well, I think one of the other things that I struggle with too is... (laughs) <laughs> getting back to um you know what you talked about with our loved ones wanting the best for us mm-hmm. i sometimes struggle to believe that my loved ones want yeah. the best for me so i don't know i mean i know a big part of it is psychological yeah and you know that but yeah well, and that's, this is why like having a coach is really important. This is why, you know, people are like, oh, I can just go to my friends for advice. And it's like, please don't right. like you go to your friends for validation. You go to your friends when you like want to, you know, gossip and bitch about somebody and they want to, you know, validate you and support you and tell you how wonderful you are. Like, that's what friends are for. Friends are not there for advice. Friends are not there right. for tough love. Friends are not there to like be real with you. And then sometimes people who love you think they know best for you and don't realize that when they're trying to help you, they're actually hurting you. And it's really hard to have that conversation with somebody to tell them that they're doing that. So that's when someone like myself comes in, it's just like, you know, a a impartial observer in the way that it's like, you know, having your best interest in mind. So that, like I said, you know, going from the present to the future with as few obstacles as possible. So loved ones, you know, they're never going to change. So if you've got a loved one that kind of says those mean things or whatever, that take it with a grain of salt. doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> right. Sure. Just, someone's opinion isn't the truth. It's just an opinion. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I love this quote. I'm just going to say it. So Amber has a unique ability to see through the clutter of my challenges and shine a spotlight on the things that matter most. She also has a wealth of helpful resources that can help you break old patterns that aren't serving you and create new and authentic ones. So I couldn't have said it better myself. So if that sounds of interest, now is your time to book your complimentary strategy call, right? So Mick, you've got your thing next week. Let's talk so that you go into that prepared. Brian, you've got your thing coming up next week. Let's talk. Get you prepared. And then Jeff, let's just talk. (laughs) So I'll give you guys some time. You can just QR code it, set it up, make sure it's on your phone. And then now is the time for all of the Q and A's that you guys have coming up. So what you got for me, what you got for me? Jeff's got a question. No, I just was going to say, thanks. It's nice that you did this and there's, 
I think there's a lot of tips and I, I think probably, you know, somebody spending some time with you probably is helpful. Yeah. I would think. Yeah. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the thing is that, you know, over the six month program that we work on the mindset things, we work basically on those six, the six C's, right? So whatever areas needs the most shoring up, like lowest hanging fruit, we always start there. And I find that it's generally mindset. (laughs) Once we tackle the mindset stuff, all the other stuff becomes a lot easier. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Any other questions for me, Jeff? Nope. Okay. So I did want to, I didn't want to step over, right? So you mentioned the gym. So I think for you strategy with the gym is it build relationships and build rapport, not necessarily like ask people out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree on that. Mm -hmm. Cause then you just become that guy that walks in the gym and compliments people and he's got Uh a smile and a great voice and, you know, and then you've got people who are like approaching you and being like, Hey, like I couldn't help but notice you have this great energy. Like some friends and I are getting drinks together later. What are you doing? You want to join us? So then all of a sudden they they are approaching you, not the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Brian, you got a question for me? Uh, honestly, like I was just kind of thinking about um, one of the dates I was on and it kind of helped me realize like, you know what, maybe I was being, we, we went on a, I want to say two or three dates and then uh, I planned for a, uh, the next one uh but she obviously never called me back or anything so i just kind of let it off but like looking back on it i think i was trying too much of being a people pleaser and all that so i think i I now kind of understand a little bit more and more of why that didn't work out (laughs) yeah yeah and the truth is is like y'all it's also being proactive you know i think where a lot of guys go wrong and i'm I'm just going to be blunt here is that you leave the ball in the woman's court more than you should Right. I like to say that conversation obviously has to go back and forth, but I think it's like an 80, 20. So you taking action 80% of the time and, you know, like leading the course of it. And, you know, there's going to be people that argue with me about that and that's fine because, you know, you work with what works for you. But I think, you know, if, if she doesn't message you, then message her again. Cause sometimes people get busy. Sometimes people get distracted. Sometimes they're dating other people. But if you really like this person and you actually want to pursue something, then act like it, right? Like effort indicates interest. So, you know, I I sent a message. She didn't reach out to me. So I guess it's not going to go anywhere. No, send her another message and send her another message. And then don't give up until you've sent three messages. (laughs) She doesn't respond. Then you can say, okay, I got the message. She's not that interested. Because I bet you she's probably sitting over there going like, man, like, he asked me out, but I really want to see, and this is the shit test that us ladies give you. This is why that connection piece is really important. It's like, I really wanted to see if you really liked me and he, he didn't call me. Like I kind of waited for him and he didn't call me. So I guess he didn't like me that much. Are you, are you laughing I think over I, there? I think I did. I think I, this was a, this was a long time ago. And I think I did send a couple of messages. Okay. I think after a second, after a second and third, I kind of got the hand. So. Okay, good. Anyway. All right. Got it. Perfect. But so it sounds yeah, it like was, rewind yeah. back was the people pleaser thing then. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay, good. Well, good. So we can talk more about that because it's, it's insidious. It, it really is. And that's a, that's a tough one to overcome. So we can do a deeper dive on that for sure. Then how about you for Mick, for, uh, for you, Mick? Um, <clears throat> I thought that all the strategies were good. Certainly stuff I couldn't, um, <clears throat> I can uh, implement on, um, various things that I'm going to go to, like my thing tomorrow yeah, or okay. the thing um, next week. Um, I guess I also just wonder why men get shit tested and women don't. Oh, you don't. Mm, um, you know unless I'm <laughs> confused because I haven't dated enough. Yeah, no, it's, it's honestly because us women have in there's a biological reason, right? Even though most people don't understand that women themselves, a lot of women don't even know they're shit testing you. So don't think it's like an intentional, weird, like nefarious female thing that we do. It's more that we want to know that we're with somebody we can trust. We want to know that it's somebody who's going to protect us when things get difficult. We want to know that it's somebody who's actually interested in us and not just a female shaped person with whom they might have sex with. Okay. Right. So when us women test you, it's because we want to know that it's us, like 
us that you really want and not just a warm body to keep you from being lonely. Right. So we test your consistency. We test your honesty. We test your confidence. We test your willingness to protect. And these are good things, right? So when you're confident, when you know who you are, like you know your character, when a woman that you really like starts shit testing you, it becomes, I'm not going to say it's fun, but it's like you recognize it for what it is. And what she's asking is, please prove to me that you really do love me, that I'm not just like entertainment for you. So when she's giving you those shit tests and you and you pass them, then she feels more and more relaxed around you. Like she can trust you. She can get vulnerable with you. She knows she's in safe hands with you. She can have a family with you, like depending on whatever your objectives are. That's why women test you. Okay. It's not to be mean. It's not to like trip you up. It's because they want to know that they're in good hands. Does that answer your question? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. It definitely did. Thank you. Very good. All right, you guys. Anything else for tonight? No? All right. So you guys got the QR code. It's on your phone so you can fill things out. Beautiful. And then the members only club, that's just my Patreon, you know, so if you find this stuff helpful and you just want to have ongoing information that's exclusive just to you, you can join me over on Patreon. There's a lot of great stuff over there already, but I take requests, right? So if you have a question that you want a video on, I can certainly put that together for you. But it's been really fun. I loved all of your questions. I loved your shares. I loved, you know, getting vulnerable and getting real about what works and what doesn't. And, and also just getting really clear that like, if you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. So, you know, there's no better time than now to take action. That's all this is. It's just an invitation to start looking at things differently. Try things differently. Excellent. All right, my love. So keep your eyes open. Uh, the recording is probably it's going to take me a few days to get it prepared. But uh, I will be sending that out so you can watch it again. And in the meantime, you know, make sure you've got your calls booked. And uh, And I'm your coach. I'm your coach from now on. So you guys just reach out with your questions whenever they come up, okay? All right. Thanks, Amber. You're very welcome. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Very welcome. Bye. Bye.